This editing mistake used to destroy my images and I didn't even realize I was doing it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid a big editing trap that makes your photos look amateurish and overcooked. First, it's important to understand the negative effect that it has on your finished images. It's a weird one because it's kind of hiding in plain sight, but once you see it, you can't unsee it and you're gonna end up wanting to re-edit some of your old photos like I ended up doing with mine. Now, let me show you three photos that I edited some years ago. Each one captured during a colorful sunrise. Even now I remember the feeling that I had of anticipation being behind the camera as I was capturing each one. That excitement of looking forward to edit them later to bring out all the colors and contrast in Photoshop to really make them pop. And that's exactly what I did. I made every color as rich and deeply saturated as possible to set these skies on fire thinking that all a photo needed to do to be amazing was overstimulate our eyeballs. But here's the thing. The problem isn't the fact that I was making colors more colorful and vibrant. The problem is the side effect of having all these deep, rich colors in the sky. So what is that side effect? Well, let me show you using this amazing drawing that I made in Photoshop. There's a mountain in the distance and a rock in the foreground. The mountain looks far away, the rock looks close, and it gives the scene a sense of depth. Now watch what happens when I edit the mountain to be darker. It kind of feels like it's getting closer to the camera, right? And when I edit the rock lighter, it recedes into the background. And suddenly they kind of look like they're the same distance away as each other from the camera, don't they? What this little demonstration shows us is how light values can affect how we perceive depth. Now consider the fact that the same thing applies to the sky and that making colors so rich and vibrant actually makes them darker. And making the sky too dark brings it forward in the composition it doesn't feel far away and your image loses depth and dimension as a result. So I'll show you what you can do to avoid this issue next, but first, that thing that I said about it being kind of hiding in plain sight, well, now I've told you about it and you've seen versions that don't have this mistake, the too dark sky stands out like a sore thumb when I flip back to my original early edits. See these parts of the sky which should be the brightest thing in the whole scene are noticeably dark and that is the telltale sign that you're gonna notice going forward. So how do you guarantee that you never make this mistake in your own editing again? Well, in three steps. You've already covered step one, which is to just become aware of the mistake and be conscious of skies that are too dark compared to everything else. Step two is to get comfortable using the advanced layer masking techniques that are gonna let you isolate the various elements in your photos so that you can edit everything in just the right amounts. Now I've made a tool that helps you do this and I've given it to you for free in the link in the description and pinned comment. It's a Photoshop plugin that lets you skip all of the complicated steps that usually puts most people off of a technique called luminosity masking. Instead of messing around all day in the channels panel trying to remember convoluted keyboard combinations to build the perfect luminosity mask, you can skip all of that with a click or two of a button. Now there is an expanded version of the plugin which you can buy and it has all the bells and whistles but the free one is going to get you a long way. I'll link to a video at the end of this one where you can learn more about luminosity masking but before you watch that here is step three to avoiding the editing mistake that destroys depth in your photos. Now once you're comfortable using luminosity masking to pick out different things and edit them by different amounts to enhance image depth the only question left is what edits should you make to which things and why. And the good news is that you don't need to remember a long list of techniques or rules to nail this one. I can demonstrate it just by showing you this one photo because it can all be summed up by the following simple guideline. And that is that things in the distance tend to be lighter, lower contrast and less saturated. And things in the foreground tend to be the opposite. So darker, higher contrast and more saturated. So write that down or remember it if you can. And the next time you edit a photo, Keep those rules in mind and let them drive your editing decisions. And to get up to speed with luminosity masking so that you can make these selective edits with the ultimate precision, watch this next video.